Welcome back to another edition of Ask the Hammer with Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Strategies. Jeffrey, I've got a question for you from one of our readers. Okay, let's do it. All right, so it goes, I'm in my early 70s and the bulk of my money earmarked for retirement is in short-term fixed income investments, say about 85%, and the rest is in stocks, say about 15%. And my son says I should increase how much I have invested in stocks using the 100 minus my age rule. What say you? Well, that's a good question. The first thing is I'm going to say absolutely throw the 100 minus your age rule out the door. That is a really great frame of reference for people, right? It, it, first of all, I don't even know how much it applies today anymore uh, since longevity is, is longer than it used to be and people are living longer, which, uh, which means in many cases they need to have more risk in their portfolio to account for a longer retirement, a longer lifespan. But regardless, that is a good, um, it's a good thing to say when we're talking to a thousand people at once to 10,000 people, a hundred, a million people on, on TV or radio or in the internet like this. Uh, but it is not good advice for you. It's not advice. It's a rule of thumb. And so I absolutely would not just dogmatically say, well, I'm a hundred uh, or rather I'm 90 and therefore I should have only 10% of my portfolio in, or I'm 70 and therefore I should have um, 30% in equities. You know, similar, that may be too high for some and too, too low for others. It goes back to what is this money for? How much, you know, what are your goals and how long does it need to last? If one of your primary goals is to make sure that you don't run out of money and you're not as concerned about leaving beyond uh, tens, hundreds, or even millions of dollars uh, to your heirs, well, then you don't have to worry about it perhaps as much, right? You can take perhaps less risk because you've done a good enough job saving over the course of your lifetime. Now, to the opposite, maybe one of your real goals is that you want to leave your heirs as big a nest egg as possible. You know, there are some who are fortunate enough to know that they have a pension and social security and maybe some other sources of income from rental properties such that they don't need their portfolio, right? That it, it just exists as kind of a cushion or if they wanna do something special, but they don't really expect to need any of those dollars on an annual basis. And in those situations, well, maybe you're not investing for yourself anymore. Maybe it's in your name, but you're really investing for your kids. And so there, maybe you are more aggressive than you would other people who are you know, of your particular age. And again, for others, if you've got more than enough money, you know, I'll give you the perfect example, Bob. Uh, someone who has, uh, let's say you win the lottery today, Bob. I'm gonna hope that you win Powerball, right? <laughs> and now you've got, a hundred million dollars sitting in the bank. God willing, right? We should all be so lucky in our lives. So you now uh, you've got this hundred million dollars sitting in the bank. Well, Bob, if you don't mind me asking, you know, how old are you this year? 62. See, young guy, yep. 62. So by our definition here, you should have 38% in of your portfolio in, in stocks. Now, I'm pretty confident, Bob, knowing you as I do, that you could have $100 million in the bank, and even with inflation, and even with everything else going on, eating into that $100 million, you would be okay. You would make it the rest of your life. You would not run out of money. And in fact, you'd probably still have a really significant nest egg to leave to your kids, even if you earned nothing on that money the rest of your life. And so the question really becomes then, do you care? Do you want to take risk? when it's not necessary. And there's no right or there's no wrong answer. It just comes down to what are your most important goals and what are the most likely ways or what is the best way to give us the greatest likelihood of you achieving those goals. It's not about who dies with the most money at the end of the day. It's about who enjoys their life and achieves more of their goals. And sometimes those things lead us down different paths. Mm. So I guess the follow-up question here, Jeffrey, is it would be hard for someone to do this on their own. It sounds like they would need the help of a professional to sort of go through the pros and cons of different asset allocations and identify what the money is to be used for and what their risk tolerance would, is and all the factors that you just outlined. So I think many people would benefit from that. I wouldn't say everybody because there are some people who are just voracious self-learners and they really enjoy this. This becomes a passion or hobby, uh, particularly when they're not so involved in regular work anymore. For instance, some 
Uh, I, I know a number of my uh, clients who are retirees, they just enjoy learning this. And perhaps, you know, you could do it on your own through learning through places just like this. Uh, but I do believe that a lot of people would benefit from an independent look. Uh, and it doesn't have to be something that's particularly expensive. You can just go sit down with someone and ask and say, does this make sense? Or what type of portfolio should I have? And it might be just a checkup. You know, it might, it doesn't have to be a forever engagement. Sometimes it is. And a lot of people find removing that, um, that decision making process to be a, a, a release of a burden for them. Uh, but others really like to maintain it and they, do, they may just want to know that they're doing the right thing or at least not making any big mistakes. And so they are absolutely, I do believe a professional and an independent voice can help if for no other reason that you remove the emotion from the process. You know, my retirement assets personally, I don't even manage myself anymore because there's a lot of emotion tied to that. And so I, I let others handle the decision-making process as to what those specific investments should be, because it's very hard when the markets are doing well not to be greedy. And it's very hard when markets are, are down not to be scared. Uh, but that is, in fact, what we need to do in order to have the best likelihood of achieving our goals. So uh, I would encourage it. I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary, but in many cases would be a, a, a significant benefit for individuals, at least a checkup if not some type of more uh, ongoing engagement. All right, Jeffrey, as, as always, you're batting a thousand, you nailed it again. And uh, before we wrap up, do you mind telling our viewers where they can ask questions if they have any? Of course not. Bob and I would love to hear from you. If you've got questions for Bob and I, just reach out and ask us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Bob and I look so forward to seeing your questions in the inbox each and every day.